Hi everybody, it's Mr. Clausen. Just wanted to go over the five types of graphs we're going to see in physics class this year. First thing you need to do is get your notebook open, turn to a nice fresh, fresh page, and put this chart into your notebook. Um, this chart we're going to refer back to just about every unit this year, so take the time to make sure that this chart is neat and organized. Get the rulers out, get out the markers, get out colored pencils, whatever you need, so that this information is there and ready for you to use when you need it. First thing you want to take a look at is that the fact that there are um, five different graphs that graph types we're going to see. So give yourself plenty of room for that. So five different um, rows. And then don't forget to put the column headings up here as well. Now I'll be talking relatively quickly throughout the video to get through the information. If I'm going too fast, just pause the video, write down what you need to, and then hit play uh, to continue on. So here we are. Uh, a graph is the best way for us to see the uh, relationship between two different variables. Uh, the independent variable, the one that we control in the experiment, is usually placed on the x-axis, and the dependent variable, the one that we end up measuring, is typically placed on the y. Now, typically or usually, uh, there are some exceptions to this, but we'll go over that when we encounter them. So this year, it's going to be very important that you understand how to read um, or understand what the graphs are telling you. So the first type of relationship we want to take a look at here is when you see something that is almost a completely horizontal line, and um, it's the easiest one to work with because what that means is there's absolutely no relationship between the two variables because as we made the x variable get bigger, the y variable did not change at all. There's no other steps needed at this point because um, y and x, they're just not related to each other, and that's totally fine. Now here's one that's very common for us to see throughout the year in introductory physics and it's called the directly proportional relationship and it's just a straight line that goes up on the graph. Now this graph has it drawn, drawn at a 45 degree angle. Often you'll see them you know more down here or a little bit steeper depending on the slope and also just how you've you know uh, scaled your graph. Now what this means is as the x variable gets bigger so whatever you put on the x so for example um, in our pendulum lab like we put mass was one of the independent variables that we chose to choose. So you could have mass down here on the bottom, and then the dependent variable would be the period on the top. Now, if mass and uh, period were a directly relationship, what it would mean is that if you doubled the mass, you'd end up um, doubling the period as well. Now, I just said if you can find that out when you actually do the experiment to see what's going on. Um, but it's called the directly proportional relationship, and the next step that you end up needing to take is absolutely nothing. You're completely done. You have a nice straight line. You know the relationship between them. If one gets uh, twice as big, the other one's going to get twice as big. The really, uh, equation we end up using is um, slope-intercept form. Remember that from math class, where y represents the y variable, x represents whatever you put on the x-axis, and then m is the slope of the line, and b is the y-intercept. Now, these two terms, uh, slope and y-intercept, can have meaning to us in physics, and we'll discuss those as needed. But for right now, just know that that's the relationship for uh, the variables you would end up picking. Okay, now this is where it gets a little bit different for us. Now, you might have wondered why this column was called the linearized column. Um, it's because now the graphs aren't actually straight lines anymore. And there's a lot of different mathematical equations that can give you curves that look like this that may not be this exact equation. And so that's what we are talking about here. So if you end up seeing a graph that looks like this, what you're going to feel pretty confident about is the fact that that is what we call an inversely proportional relationship. So what this means is as x gets bigger, so as the x value gets larger, what's actually happening to the y value is it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So what we say is y is inversely proportional to x, or as x gets bigger, y gets smaller. Now, to check to see that this is the relationship you actually have, what you're going to end up doing is keeping your y variables completely the same. You're not going to change the values of them at all. And you're going to take whatever numbers you put in on the x-axis, and you're going to find the inverse of them. So if you remember from math, inverse means 1 over, or another way you can do it is you just take x to the negative 1 power. These are equivalent statements. They mean the same thing. If that ends up being a straight line, so if you then go ahead and plot this, and it ends up being a straight line like we saw before, then you know what you have is the relationship between y and x is the fact that y is proportional to the inverse of x. All right. Next one you can see is a curve where it ends up getting bigger. So what happens here is as x is, is getting bigger, y is also getting bigger, but it gets bigger much faster. And typically the one we see here is called the squared relationship. So we'd say it's a squared relationship or y is proportional to the square of x. To check to make sure that this is truly a square, you just don't want to assume uh, it could be, you know, to the cubed power, the fourth power, something else like that. 
Um, what you end up doing is you leave the Y variables the same again, but this time, whatever, um, I keep saying variables, but I mean quantities, the numbers you put in on the Y axis, uh, you leave those the same. And the numbers you put on, on the X axis, you put those to the squared power. You make a new graph, you plot that. If it ends up being a straight line, you know that you have um, a squared relationship. So what would end up happening here is to get the equation of that line is the Y variable would be proportional to or equal to the slope times x squared plus the y-intercept. And a lot of time, we'll talk about what to do with that y-intercept. All right. One of the less common, but it does still show up from time to time, is uh, time time. That's from time to time is this one right here, where the graph gets bigger. So both x and y are both getting bigger. But you can see that as the x variable is getting bigger, what happens to the increase with the y is it seems to get slower and slower and slower. And so it starts to flatten out up here along the top. And this is a little bit awkward to say, but we end up saying is the square of the y is proportional to the x. What seems to roll off the tongue a little bit easier is you'd say is y is proportional to the square root of x. Now to check to see if you have this relationship, what you do, this time you take your y variables, so whatever you put in on the, um, on the y column, you go ahead and you square those and you plot that versus x being the same. If once again, you get a straight line, what that means is this is the relationship you have right here, where y squared is equal to mx plus b. Now, I know some of you are like, well, if I just see that shape, how come I just don't do this and be done with it? Well, because we don't really know 100% of the time if it's y to the squared power, y to the third power, y to the fourth power, etc. And so this is done as a double check to make sure that our hunch is correct. Um, so I've been talking about this term relationship. So when you state the relationship between variables, you'll say something like this. As the x variable increases, the y variable um, increases proportionally. Or you could say as the x variable increases, the y variable um, increases at the square of the x. So you want to be very specific about the, the true relationship with it. Now, some of you might be a little confused because I keep using this term relationship between variables, but it's something that you've been using um, for a very long time now in science class. Um, Another word that students use to describe the relationship is the equation or the formula. So if you wanted to calculate the force, people say, what's the formula to calculate force? Well, really what that is, it's the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration that was determined using a graph. So we say relationship, but really equations or formulas are what we're talking about. So there's the graph again. Excuse me, that's graph. The chart of the graphs again. Go ahead and make sure that's in your notebook, and I'll see you when I see you.